Recently, I've actually really been in a strat mode. If not a strat mode, I've been playing my baritone over there a lot. So you might be wondering why I'm making a video about these three Les Pauls. But I think it's the right time when you're in a strat mood to be a bit dispassionate about this sort of thing, to figure out, do I need to keep all three of these Les Pauls? Now, I mean, I think they're all gorgeous guitars. I an absolutely love Les Pauls. I grew up idolizing Jimmy Page and the Les Paul was the guitar I couldn't get when I was younger. Um, so there's a sort of thing about them, but you know, I had the same thing about strats as well. And um, what I want to figure out today is why have I got two 1959 reissues uh, as well as the 1960 reissue? Do I need to keep all three of them or could I keep two of them to the 60 and a 59? I don't know, it's the first time I'm gonna compare all three of them. So I'm gonna spend a bit of time, I'm gonna sort of show you what they are, talk you through, you know, what feeling you get from playing them, what the necks are like, what the weights are like, how resonant are they, does that make a difference? Um, one of them doesn't have the original pickups in anymore, so we'll have a listen to that. So I figure we'll just start by having a quick look at each one and I'll tell you what it is. So throughout today's video, the rig is gonna be the Two Rock Classic Reverb. I was deciding between the Reverb and the TS-1 and um, just fancied that more vintage Fender character today with a bit of reverb in it. And I'm going to be using mainly the Jam Ray pedal. If I use anything else, I'll let you know. So this is the 1959 reissue, the R9 that I first bought a couple of years ago. It's a 2019 model. It was in fact the 60th anniversary of the 1959 Les Paul. That's not a reason I bought it. I don't didn't put any stock in that, but it just happened to be the year that I bought. Now this was the first Les Paul I ever bought. It was an absolute dream for me and I bought it online during a lockdown. Um, it wasn't the first one that I picked on the Anderton's website. I was just going by weight. The first one they called me and said, actually, that's been in the shop and it's got some dings on it. Do you want it? I was like, I'm not sure. The second one I picked turned out to be a stock error and it didn't exist anymore. And then this was my third choice. They had quite a few of them though. And I actually, looking close up at the pictures, realized this was probably my favorite one that they had aesthetically. I love all of these mineral lines and everything, but okay. Of course I love the look of a Les Paul. I'm a big Les Paul fan. And I wanted to start with a 59. Um, I tell a lie, it wasn't the first Les Paul. <laughs> I'd had a gold top reissue before that, but it didn't feel like the thing that I wanted at the time. You know, these bursts, that was like the dream guitar for me. So, all three of these Les Pauls are between eight and a half and nine pounds. None of them feel super light. None of them feel super heavy. Um, the other two I've picked from actually playing in shops and finding what's best, as I said, this one was a blind purchase and that's probably a reason why it's never been the best guitar I've ever had in inverted commas. When I first got it, I was in love with it and I thought it just sounded fantastic and um, it took me a long, a long time of playing it and playing other, you know, I played an original 59 and a 57 gold top next to this one and realized it was a little bit muddy, it was a little bit unbalanced, it was a little bit harsh in the top end and it was muddy in the low end. Anything you played from the third fret downwards would be a bit too muddy. So eventually I asked my mate Stuart, who um, has a company called Sunbear Pickups, if he could make a set of pickups just for this guitar. So he did. He listened to the guitar acoustically and he decided what he thought would work best. So why don't we have a quick listen to this one uh, and then we'll move on to the next one.
Okay, this is my 1960 reissue. I didn't intend to buy this guitar per se. I was at a guitar shop looking at another guitar. Picked this one up out of interest because it was had some uh, money taken off. It had been not returned, but bought, and then the person decided to cancel the order or something quite a long time after he made it. Anyway, it's got that Murphy Lab. So it's a light-aged or ultra-light-aged Murphy Lab. So there's a lot of checking, but not any dings or other wear to it um the thing about the 60 is it's going to have a thinner neck and i purposely wanted the v2 1960s so there are three versions v1 is basically the early 60s is basically a 59 it's still got a fatter neck um so the specs are much more like the 59 this v2 is great because it has a slightly thinner neck and also has the sorts of dyes that will fade over time and age so you don't get that complete tomato soup thing and the the unaging red and then you get the v3 which has a fixed dye so a fixed a fixed dye so it won't age particularly so i wanted the v2 i wanted something that felt different from the 59 but still would age and have that real vintage characteristic and this guitar i picked it up plugged it in um, it was in a video I made at Peach Guitars a long time ago where I bought uh, this gold SG and um, this HSS hardtail here. And I played about three notes on it and I was like, oh God, okay, I wasn't expecting to want to buy a Les Paul. But it just has a sweetness to it. And so when we hear it in a minute, hopefully I'll be able to get that across. Um, but yeah, what I really love is I get a lot less fatigue in my hand playing on this neck um than i do on the the fatter 59 ones the only thing i would say is i wish they hadn't done such checking on the back of the neck it's a bit you know you can really feel those ridges under your hand but yeah this has still got the custom buckers <laughs> Okay, this is my latest one. This is an R9. It's from Peach Guitars. It's one of their select tops. So John at Peach actually goes out to Nashville every so often, picks a load of maple tops. And um, I didn't go there picking this, you know, because I wanted a guitar that was this. I'm going to quit. It's, it's a beautiful guitar. I'm not someone that's into fussy patterns when it comes to the tiger striping across. Um, but I'm glad that the guitar I ended up picking has all of these other marks in these vertical grain patterns and the, you know, all these mineral marks and everything. But I never ended up showing the video where I picked this guitar because I didn't get quite enough good footage. Basically, we laid out 10 Les Pauls, all of them R9s, all of them these select tops. I played each and every one. Okay, I've got nine Les Pauls to try. They're all 59s, VOS, hand-picked tops. So I'm going to quickly try each one for resonance. one and like do a yes pile and a no pile and then try yeah. the new yeses again. Yeah, man. Come here, <laughs> oh cool man, cheers. Okay, so this is the second one and it's just not as resonant but I'll just play it for a sec. Nah, it's got that thing 
the other R9 I got at home was doing with the original pickups. It's just a bit too bright and a bit too harsh. Whereas the first one I just played is going in the maybe pile. It's nice, isn't it? So far I've got one in the maybe pile and one in the no pile. <laughs> Too bright for me. Another one for the maybe pile, something great about the neck pickup position. <laughs> Neck is great, bridge is think that man is always going to bring out the extreme highs. True. Try to bring the magnetone, you'd be like... I should do that in the video, shouldn't I? You'll want to try them all again now. Okay, I'm in the magnetone now, but without all my microphones, because I'm in a bit of a rush now, but... <laughs> somehow so I've got to try <laughs> gonna go back and try a few of the different ones again no, not quite for me it was this first one I think I liked as well
Very similar to my other R9, but the, it's <laughs> very spongy. The bridge pickup, isn't it, yeah. on that one? Which is what, yeah, it's not yeah. ice picking. figured the best one for me was this one it's um bright and clear there's no muddiness and um, I barely played it on the channel because I hadn't really unveiled it as as such it didn't cost any more for being a select top um, still the same price as the other ones it just has this very particular nice top and I just think it's really characterful I actually would have wanted a lemon I've been after a lemon burst if I ever get another burst type i'm sure i will at some point in future if i sell one of these as well i want i wanted a lemon burst they, there were some there but this one was the one that i enjoyed playing the most it's the heaviest one just under nine pounds but um yeah what we're going to do in a second is hear all three of them just very quickly for 10 seconds each acoustically i'm just going to strum this one the neck and the body vibrate fully as you just hit an acoustic strum it's it's amazing First R9. So that first R9 feels a little bit muffled and not full and rich and not incredibly resonant. It's by far not, it's not the worst I've ever come across. You get ones that are completely dead. It's not dead, it's just a bit unbalanced and a little bit muffled. This is the R0. This is much richer, sweeter, fuller, and more resonant. It vibrates through the neck a lot, um, and you get sort of like no muffling and the fullest frequency from the bottom to the top. Uh, for me, that's just fantastic. That's the Murphy Lab. Okay, this is the newest R9, the Select Top.
This is somewhere between the two. It's richer and more resonant than the, the other R9. Uh, it's more balanced as well. But it's not as big and sweet sounding as the Murphy Lab one. Um, if I feel the vibration, this one vibrates the most, but the character is a bit flatter uh, overall than the, R, the R0 the Murphy Lab. So I think to myself, should I be selling one of these? Well, I probably wouldn't sell that R9 because it's the newest one and I honestly think it's a better guitar than my first R9. The Murphy Lab, if I had to, if I was gonna take a Les Paul out to play, um, if I'm telling you which is the best of my Les Pauls, I've got to say, I think it's that one, the one in the middle with the thinner neck. It's just the richest and warmest one, whilst also being the most open. And uh, yeah, I think it's it's a really quite special Les Paul. And I felt that from the first few notes I played. And definitely great for blues. This one is a bit more blues rock rock. It's a bit flatter across the whole spectrum of notes. And it's big sounding. It's got a bit more brightness to it, but it's not ice picky and it's got less muddiness than the other R9. But I can't see myself selling these. The, be the reason being, you know, sentimentality, my first burst. And it's an interesting sounding guitar. It's definitely not a bad guitar. I've played much worse Les Pauls. Um, and I think especially for sort of low key blues and stuff, it's just got a really nice... Um, do you know it's got a very sort of what's the right feel what's the right word almost glassy for a les paul and also just yeah it's got character it's got character to it it's not perfect uh clearly not going to sell this one i got it at a decent price and it's just a guitar that is one you know one of the best guitars i've got and then this one this is like just a beautiful r9 and as i said better than my other r9 in so many ways it's um you know, I basically don't need to look for, <laughs> for an, any other R9. So why would you have three Les Pauls? Uh, well, if you're a nutter like me and you love, you know, every guitar, but you love Les Pauls a lot as well. Um, there's a, a historic nostalgic connection for me to this sort of guitar. Uh, I love having the choice. Um, but ultimately, you don't need more than one of this vintage style unless you're an absolute, you know, Les Paul person um and i think going forward i wouldn't be buying any more unless i came across the best les paul i possibly could um or if i could ever afford a real 50s one in the first place but overall yeah it's it's very lucky for me to be able to have these three guitars um it's a little bit crazy but ultimately i came across three guitars that i really love uh, and I was just happy to be able to share them with you. So I hope that's been a fun video and showing you a bit about how I would choose a Les Paul, what it is about a Les Paul that I would enjoy. Um, yeah. Uh, before I leave you, my next pedal giveaway competition is still going. This is when I hit seven and a half thousand subs. I'll be giving away this, oh, it's upside down, this white protein pedal from Brown. It's a blues breaker on one side and a Nobles type pedal on the other. In fact, great with a Les Paul. You can also play them two, the two together and it's really bluesy but you can also get more rocky stuff out of it um, or just a boost with this blue side. So um, if you want to uh, be part of that giveaway you just got to subscribe to the channel and comment and then I'll pick a name out of the hat anywhere in the world. So anyway, see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>